Now let's look at the next parameter and that is the spin spin coupling. The chemical shift was the first one. Now let's look at the is there no So 
We have to see which way it influences. If the two are parallel, then the interaction between them is what? I1 dot I2, mu1 dot mu2. Okay? So therefore, if the two are parallel, what will happen to the energy? The energy of this state will go up. Okay? And this is if the F spin is parallel. F is parallel. Hmm. Now, energy will be down if F is anti And Remember, alpha is parallel. Okay. Likewise, now beta. What will happen? See the beta, if, if the F is parallel, this will come down. And F is parallel, it will, and sorry, anti-parallel, it will go up. Because the interaction is mu1 dot mu2. It will be interaction between the two. So now what are the, now therefore now you have four energy levels. Correct? Yes. So what are the transitions possible? I had this transition from here to here. I am talking about the transition of proton only. I am looking at what the orientations of the F spin are. So what are the transitions possible? I must go from the alpha to the beta. Right? So from the alpha to the beta is from here to here. And there is, there should be another transition. Which is that transition? And beta to the alpha, I should get from beta to the uh, from here to here. Yeah. Yes. But this, these two will be the same energy. This two the same energy. Now this will get split into two. Alpha. Uh, this is alpha alpha, this is alpha beta. And there should be another transition, no? Yes, 
No, it is not changing. These two it is the same. These two it is the same. So the doctor's stain is not the beta beta. It is the beta beta. And this is also beta. No, overall yes, that is different. We are not talking about energies of the proton spin. How much is this energy different? This is a very small energy. This just because of the mu one dot mu two. How much is that energy different? Change going up. If you take the energy of the F spin as well, then of course if you take the alpha alpha state will be the lowest. That calculation we will do. We are only talking about now the energies of the proton, of the proton spin, how it is changing because of orientation of the earth. This is only the coupling point. We are not included here in, in the, we are not calculated the total energy of the system. We are calculated only the energy of the proton spin, proton spin, how it is changing because of the orientation of the earth. F spin, if it is in the antiparallel state, it has this absorption frequency. If it is in the parallel state, it has different absorption frequency. This is the point I am trying to make. And therefore, you will now get two lines instead of one line, and that is that difference is called as the coupling constant. So therefore, for F for proton, you will get two lines. And this is called as a coupling constant. The center will be the chemical shift. Center will be the chemical shift. And similarly for F. You can do the same thing for F. This is the energy difference for proton I have written. You can write the same for F as well. Then you will have the chemical shift of the F and it is split into two because of the coupling to the proton. Is that yes? This is the delta of proton. Okay. Of proton. You will have a similar thing for the cast F. And this, this will be delta F. And this will be J. And this energy separation will be the same. This and this separation will be the same. Is that clear? <coughs> this energy diagram will come to later. Huh? But here, uh, here I have written alpha alpha as the lowest state. This, this includes the energy of both proton and F. Yeah, that, that will come later. Okay. Let's take a, another example of CH2. How does it influence CH2? CH2. I have the proton here. Field is here. Nucleus proton is and then the electron is here. And then you cover that with the carbon orbital. And you put the electron in this manner, and here you have the carbon, and another orbital here, and then here you have the proton, and it, and this will be parallel. This will be the most stable state. For any other thing, for the will be there, but then you have different energy. Sorry? So this is carbon here, and these are the hybrid orbitals. These are the hybrid orbitals of, of the carbon. Mm -hmm. And you have the proton nucleus here. Mm -hmm. One proton nucleus, another proton nucleus. And the electron, the electron will be like this and the nucleus will be like that. The smaller arrow is for the electron, the bigger arrow is for the proton. Okay? This will be the most stable state. I have written here the ground state, which will be the most stable state through the calculation. Now we notice here 
What is the ground state? For compare this with that. The ground state here, these two protons have the same orientation. Have the same orientation with respect to the field. In the case of the HF, the two spins have opposite orientation with respect to the field. Okay. This has an implication. This has an implication that the coupling comes to here comes out to be negative. Therefore, the CH2 geminal couplings, this is a geminal coupling, right? The two bond. This is two bond coupling. The two bond couplings are therefore negative in nature. And this is because of this, this factor. Yeah? Yeah. So the two proton orientations here are the same in the ground state. Okay? And so when I say these energies go up, what does it depend upon? It depends upon the coupling constant. Mu1 dot mu2, there is a constant which is j, j times mu1 dot mu2 which reflects on that. So if that j is positive, then what I said here was right. Correct? So then I put the upper beta fellow down. So beta fellow down, yeah, upper beta fellow down. Because I assume that there is, a, there is nothing, the coefficient on the side is, is positive. So the interaction here is j i1 dot i2 and if this constant, if this fellow is positive, then alpha, beta will be a lower energy. Okay, that's what we did here. And because we know that there is a lower energy, we assume that okay, the j is positive. In this case, it turns out that the parallel orientation is positive. Parallel orientation is, is, is the more ground state, is the lower energy. If that has to become lower energy, then the J has to become negative. Is that clear? No, sir. Huh? It is not clear why J is negative in this case. Okay. You see, this is the interaction. Huh. Mm. So this is the interaction we were to see. If this have the same orientation, if the two have the same orientation, the number will be positive. Mm -hmm. That's the ground state. Talk about the ground state, that number will be positive. That is how I write, write the energy level diagram there. So when I took the energy level down here, alpha and this fellow is beta, so this is orientation in the parallel. And this is alpha beta. I wrote alpha beta here. Alpha beta I take the energy level down because it is mu1 dot mu2. The two are opposite in orientation for that interaction energy is negative. Okay. If the two are opposite in orientation, that interaction energy is negative. If the two are parallel, of course the interaction energy is positive. Clear? So therefore that energy has to go up. If the two are parallel, the energy has to go up. But if that has to become lower, something else has to contribute to that. That is J. That is the value of J. In this case, it turns out that this parallel orientation is the lower energy. Is the lower energy. In the geminal, in the case of two bond couplings, the geminal case, this parallel orientation turns out to be more stable, therefore that is coming down in energy, and therefore the J has to be negative. That's the rationale as to why geminal couplings are negative. Okay. Now. Sir, so what is the meaning of negative J value? It is negative by sign only or? Is no, no, negative by sign. Negative by sign. But it has no different no, 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 no. It is a number which is it's a negative number. Of course, in your spectra, in the appearance of the spectra, you can't figure out whether it is positive or negative, they will appear the same, the spectra appears the same. Only when you do an analysis and try to simulate, then of course you will have to put the appropriate. It becomes important and that we will see later. Where it becomes important. Okay? So there is no other important concept we have to get. So then here there will be two things. Yeah. Where? CH2. Huh? CH2. 
Yeah, yeah, actually there will be if the two protons are not equivalent, because there will be two things. The two protons are equivalent. From this statement, we cannot differentiate the equivalent or non equivalent. No, no, here it will just be H and F are clearly non equivalent. H and F are clearly different. H for CH2. For CH2, if they are equivalent, of course you will not see the splitting at all. If they are completely equivalent, you won't see the splitting. But if they are non equivalent, then you will see the splitting. And then, of course, it will have uh, negative. But once again, from the spectrum, we can't make out whether it is positive or negative. It will appear the same when the finally we got the spectrum, the splitting will appear. And you say that from this diagram or from yeah. this discussion, uh -huh. we cannot differentiate equivalent or non equivalent. No, no, no. I am only explaining here how the coupling arises. Coupling arises and how it will result in splitting of the lines. That's what I am trying to explain. And we have to see much more to actually get the energies and frequencies, all that we will have to do. But this is a very conventional, classical approach of analyzing the spectrum. Okay, we will, it results in a split. Okay. Now let us look at uh, other concepts, chemical equivalence. What is chemical equivalence? For completeness, I am putting this here, so you probably already know all of these ones. So this is the chemical shifts are the same. But there is another term which you often come across. What is that one? Magnetic. What is the difference between these two? What is, how is magnetic equivalence different from chemical equivalence? Chemical equivalence is for a particular nuclear. But magnetic for a particular? Nuclear or for a particular photon nuclear. Uh -huh. A magnetic equivalence is how two different photon and nuclear interact between each other. Yes. Chemical equivalent is, I mean, if you, if your chemical environment around the nucleus is the same. Yes. Magnetic equivalent is if your delta value is the same. Delta value is the same is chemical equivalence. Delta value being the same is chemical equivalence. So if I have a group of protons here, let's say I have some group of protons here, one, two, three. And I have another group of protons here, 4, 5, 6. These are all protons. All are protons. Now you tell me what will be the difference when there is chemical equivalence and magnetic equivalence. If chemical equivalence is same, then both have the same data. Yes. Then suppose there are two protons, if they have the same chemical environment and same data. Yeah. Uh, but if, if they are not magnetically equivalent, uh -huh. then they are not, uh, means the coupling value is not different. What I mean to say uh -huh. Suppose it okay. I, think, I think you are almost there. So yes, this, this is a group of protons. These are chemically equivalent within themselves. These are chemically equivalent within themselves. But this and this are not the same. These are different groups. I have written different groups. So this has one chemical one chemical shift, this group has one chemical shift, this group has one chemical shift. Within themselves, they are chemically equivalent. These are chemically equivalent, these are also chemically equivalent. But if these have to be also called magnetically equivalent, then each one of these fellow has to have the same coupling with each one of these fellows. The coupling constant with these, from here to here, has to be the same with everyone else. Then this will be magnetically, this group is then also called as magnetically equivalent. Likewise here, very worse. So you always uh, uh, label these nuclei with alphabets. Typically we have nomenclature of uh, nuclei is, how do you know the, uh, 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 what is the nomenclature for the? Uh, 
Because uh, you do alphabets, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, right? So you always go from A to Z. The distance between them indicates how much is the chemical shift difference between them. If I take two protons which are which I label them as A, B, then their chemical shifts are very close. If I have A and X, then they are very far. Okay? So that is the way you use. If, therefore, if I have a system called A2 and X2, that means I have the two protons in A type, two protons in X type. These are magnetically equivalent. These are also magnetically equivalent because the coupling between these two is the same. For each one of these is the same with each one of these here. Then they are magnetically equivalent. The magnetic coupling between X and X and A and X is the same. Now A and X, A and X is the same. There are A1 and A2 here, right? Two protons, right? And I say A1 and X1 and A2 X2 are the same. Yes. A1, A, X1, A1, X2, A2, X1, A2, X2, all are same. All then, huh? All must be same. Yes. Then the two are equivalent group of magnetically equivalent group of protons. And A1 and A2? Yeah. Uh, are there will also be a coupling constant there. No, sir. Are they different chemical species or same? No, 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 same, same. Same chemical species? Proton. Both are proton. Okay. Then only they will have same chemical shift. So if they are different species, of course we will have different uh, dimensions. Okay? There is no question of equivalence if you have a proton and a carbon. into two 
This is also J A X. This is also J A X. So you will get a three line pattern. These are all equivalent equivalent things, right? And therefore, these will automatically be in the ratio one is to two is to one. If I have A X three, what do you get? Huh? One is to three is to three is to one. Okay, so uh, so essentially it goes to the binomial coefficients. So these are for equivalent to the R, for non-equivalent to the R, of course each one is a separate coupling constant. And such a kind of a triangle, you generate a kind of a triangle which is called as Pascal triangle. In such an analysis, first order analysis, some rules of first order analysis will be just write down.
If I have a CH and a CH3 group, the integral of the CH3 group spectrum will be three times the size of the CH. Okay, so that so therefore you use these integral values to actually calculate your structure. When you do structure analysis, you make use of all of these. You use the coupling constant, you use the chemical shift, then you use the integrals. All of these are used to characterize your molecular structure. Okay, I think, I think we can uh, stop here.